MAGA is still the party of losers. The breakdown starts now. Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer, and this is the Rick Wilson, fresh off of his trip to Miami, where the GOP debate took place last night. Another shit show, of course, which is not a shocker. Rick, I am impressed with your travel logistics that you were able to make it on time for the live show. Good to see you. I have been last week, as you know, you and I went to do a speech. We did a speech together in Nashville on Wednesday night. Got on a plane, had meet we had meetings Thursday morning in Nashville. You and yep. I did. I got on a plane Thursday afternoon, flew to Savannah, had a dinner with my son uh, and his fiance. My and then he daughter, got married. My, and my fiance. We had a had a wedding party the next night, had a wedding on Saturday, came back to Florida on Sunday, went down to Miami this week, got to Orlando on a train, got in a car, drove home. All for you, America, to be on the breakdown right now, 7 p.m. East Coast time. I am jacked up as shit on caffeine. How many freaking Diet Cokes have you had on that car ride? I'm I'm going like half a half a dozen. I'm, I'm thinking that you could manage it more in like gallons than individual <laughs> units. Well, yeah, you definitely have me beat. After Nashville, when you flew to Savannah, I had to do another. Um, oh, you went to the West Coast. Um, right. I did what? that event in Nashville for the Leadership Nashville group. And yep. then first thing Friday morning, I flew out to L.A. to speak in front of the Impact Guild uh, out there oh, and, yeah. about democracy and all that. And then I flew back from L.A. on Sunday. <laughs> It's been, and then we had the elections this week. I mean, it has been nonstop for all of us. It's really been nuts. But you know what? We're thrilled to be with you guys because it's been a couple weeks because we've been on the road fighting for freedom and having fun most of the time. Um, oh, and right. And we're going to talk about all that stuff tonight. We're going to talk about the debate because how could we not? We're going to talk about the election the 23 election results on Tuesday, because how could we not? Of course, there's the doom poll about Biden. Everybody calm down. We're going to talk about that. And then Trump's really bad week in court. Um, how could we not talk about that? But before we get to all of it, we have to bless you with the last week in the Republican Party. Just to recap, in case you forgot about the crazy. Roll it. We are broadcasting tonight live from our nation's capital, right here in the swamp and the sewer. Republican voters across the country are sick and tired of Republicans. I should have worn makeup. Donald Trump just declared this an unfair trial from inside the no. courtroom. A very un. Do you have more information on that? A very, very unfair. The court was uh, the fraudster in this case. I was yelled at. And I've had a judge who is unhinged slamming a table. Our banks love us. Everything they accuse Donald Trump of doing, Joe Biden actually has done. Hitler was elected. Biden had to steal the election. But Hitler was actually elected. Right. That's the difference between Biden and Hitler. Only one I can think of. Can you say unequivocally that the 2020 election was not stolen? We're actually doing really good. Uh, other than the fact that I don't have any more money. The entire world is watching this and they're laughing about what's going on. So if they expel you and then they put someone else in the seat, you're going to run in 2024. Absolutely. Clown show, that's exactly what it is. Paper straws are absolutely despised by many Americans because they start to become soggy almost immediately when you put them into a drink. Uh, members of, uh, of uh, both the House and the Senate get compromised by sleeping with children. My husband is going to be Uncle Sam, and I will be the Statue of Liberty. I need more information before I can conclude that he's wearing lifts. This is no time for foot fetishes. The top of the boot literally almost touches the bottom about three inches in. Like, that's just weird, folks. You know, if Donald Trump can summon the balls to show up to the debate, I'll wear a boot on my head. This is the state of the United I, States of America right now, Sean. I predicted that there was a very real chance the Democrats would jettison Joe Biden and parachute in Michelle Obama, that they do it at the convention next summer. I think the chances of that are rising every day. Everything's a lie. The whole thing is a lie. How dumb can we be, man?
Yes, I kind of missed the last week in the Republican parties on you know, the show. That had some real juice tonight. Shout out to Jeff this week. Yes, for and a masterful piece of LWRP. Yes, and I'm digging the new music. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you guys really like Last Week in the Republican Party, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are starting to put more of our stuff there. It's easier for people We're to We're trying find. not to be on the hell site as yes, much. Yes, that's one of the big reasons too because it sucks now even worse than ever that we're talking about twitter x whatever the hell it's called so if you want to see our content and you can subscribe to the youtube channel every tuesday last week in the republican party comes out and then obviously on thursdays uh you get to see the breakdown and it'll remind you when we're coming on in case you forget so, like and subscribe yes like and subscribe and we know because we have our folks that read the chat a lot of times rick is reading the chat during the show so we appreciate You'll your comments I, I try to scan the chat while we're going yes well i can't because one of us has oh, to keep I their know. eyes on the road <laughs> <laughs> One of us has to keep their eyes on the road uh, uh, during the show, but we do see your comments and I go back and I read them after the shows oftentimes. So we appreciate you guys out there in our YouTube chat. Now, Rick Wilson. Yes, ma'am. The debate last night. Um, Bad, weak, low energy. I'm, <laughs> I just, I've been to a couple of these things in the past when, you know, it used to be a thing and there was actual substance to these debates. This nonsense, uh, we're on number three now, it's it's excruciating to watch. And I have to say, I agree with Donald Trump at the at his competing rally 10 miles down the road in Hialeah in South Florida, where he's like, nobody watches these things, they're terrible. Yeah, he's kind of right, except we have to suffer through them so we can talk about it. For those of you who did not watch it, shout out to our rapid response team who did watch it and mm -hmm. cut this clip for you guys so you can get a sense of... Um, well, actually, we'll get to the rally in a second. Let's talk about the debate before we get to the rally. Rick, I don't, I, I, I want to punch Vivek Ramaswamy in his face every time he opens his mouth. Honestly, I, I have I a don't, physical I don't, I want to punch him, I want to nut punch him every time he opens his mouth. <laughs> Honestly, let's just skip right to it, okay? He has to that have guy, some first. Let me tell you, that guy is every libertarian incel dipshit your freshman year of college who sits in the dorm room and 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 lectures you on uh you haven't sufficiently understood Ayn Rand. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. This guy, there's something about him that like that irritates me at a level where when I see him, all I think of is I'd like to see Vivek Ramas more Vivek Ramaswamy after the wolves are finished. Right. This guy is so truly and look. You and I are not Nikki Haley stands by any no, means. No, no. But when he went after her daughter, I mean, get the fuck out of here. Yes. Go after, we, as I've proven before, go after my kids and things are going to go really fucking wrong for yes. you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, listen, he he had so many cringe moments last night um, that it, it was hard to keep track. But th there were yeah. two in particular. And clearly Nikki Haley is the one that has the most momentum because she was the one everyone was going after. And oh, I will fault. give her credit. I will give her credit. She handled it pretty well. Um, let's show a clip of him making this comment about her daughter. It was in the context of a TikTok conversation. How do you get TikTok banned if you use it? Well, I, I, I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters crapping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy scum. answer is actually to say that we're just going to ban one app. We got to go. Listen, she I thought she was going to go Will Smith on him. OK, keep my daughter's name out of your effing mouth. Like she handled it, I think, as best as yep. she possibly could have in that moment. And some people said, you know, oh, the name calling. She called him scum. <laughs> Look, that was probably the most mild thing that she could think of at that moment. And I don't blame her. And I think a lot of people, even if whether you like her or not, were like, good for you, sister. You know what? I mean, look, it's one of those things where if he had said that about my kid when I was on the stage, he'd be eating out of a straw for the next two months. Yeah, it's but 
She had the right response. He did. And, I thought it was and, and he's, he's part, though, the, the thing about Vivek, I think, is important to understand. He is part of this new sort of Republican trolling culture where all they all they really want to do is have the click worthy moment. They want to have the the moment where they get the the, the incel boys going, hey, he's based. He's yeah. an idiot. It's he's true. a rude, he's a rude, small dipshit. And and again, not standing for Nikki Haley when I when I say that that for any parent, you know what? And people should like I, this has always been a rule that I followed in politics. If the kids are civilians or they're under or they're under 18, they stay out of the political dialogue. Right. No matter how hard I'm going at a candidate, I'm not going to say, oh, by the way, your son got a DWI at 50, whatever. I'm not right. going to do it. Never have. I've never taken a run at Baron Trump. You can go through. I've gone after the Trump family in every possible degree, variation of permutation. I've never attacked Baron Trump because he's still technically a he's civilian. A kid. Yeah, and he's a kid. Now, Coakley, Don Jr., uh, <laughs> Slow Eric, Travanka, even even fair Tiffany, game, fair game, wide open. Um, you know, weapons free, as they say. Yes, but him going after her daughter, it was just so. And, and it it's was calculated, you know, it was calculated because she she called him out on uh, joining TikTok relatively recently after everyone knows that. I mean, those I'm sure there's people who are on TikTok and their kids are on TikTok. TikTok is a national security risk. We don't have TikTok right. in my house. It's not even it's not installed on any of our devices. It Same cannot here. be because of my husband's security Correct. clearance. Correct. There is a directive like we can't even like say TikTok. It's it's a problem. And the Chinese know it. And that conversation, actually, I'm glad it came up because it it is a legitimate concern what the Chinese are doing with TikTok um, and manipulating information and all of that. However, she he, he this was his idea of the comeback when she criticized him rightfully for it because he is an opportunist he's a plagiarizer he's a poser <laughs> and this was his way of rallying up the bros that he's not going to let this woman get the best of him and you know what he tried it again he tried it another time in the debate where he made a comment now this was a twofer he was going for her and Ron DeSantis because you know they both wear heels so um <laughs> It got a little lost because it came from him and he's such a jerk off. But listen to this. And she had a good comeback for him on this, too. When Republicans do it or Democrats do it, that's the choice we face. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's going to put this country first? Or do you want Dick Cheney in three inch heels? All right, Mr. In which case, we've got two of them on stage. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. Yes, I'd first like to say they're five inch heels and I don't wear them unless you can run in them. Um, <laughs> The second thing that I will say is I wear heels. They're not for a fashion statement. They're for ammunition. Let me say one other thing about the, the, and what other name Vivek Ramaswamy ought to keep out of his mouth. My old boss, Dick Cheney. Yeah. Y'all may not love Dick Cheney, but Dick Cheney shits bigger than Vivek Ramaswamy any <laughs> given morning. I mean, that, uh, get yes, out of here. Yeah, he. Need, I know. Oh, and as someone who used to run around Capitol Hill in five inch heels, I can appreciate Nikki Haley's uh, comment on that. And you know, look, again, at least it was she was able to think quickly on her feet and shut him down. It just made him look like smaller and smaller. The the, the, right. the asshole that he is. And um, he, she, unlike him, she's actually gaining momentum and he's losing it. So his little audition to be uh, the next Fox News podcast bro or whatever the hell he's going to do right. is, uh, you know, good luck with that, buddy. But he needs to really just stop it. Now, the reason why we're talking about all of this as opposed to anything like real substantive is because there wasn't really much that's going to make a damn bit of difference in this debate. Trump is still going to be the nominee. It's not going to matter. Um, yeah. So we're pointing out little things that at least kept us interested in watching the debate. Um, Chris Christie, I thought, did a decent job last night as well. He actually sounded sane most of the time. But, ex but except I don't think that I, I thought he was a little more subdued. I guess yeah, was, I, mean, look, I, I, I don't know. I, I will say to, this. I think they all realize, Tara, I think they all realize that this is for Ramaswamy and Christie, almost certainly their last debate. Correct. Correct. Probably for Tim Scott. Tim Scott, I am told <laughs> it was, I'm told it was that they called an audible at the party at the very last minute. And it was essentially like, well, we've got this many podiums. We'll let Tim Scott stay. 
Interesting. He did not make all the numbers, I'm told. Um, but look, they're, 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 it does tell you something. Like the degree to which they're just sniping at one another now, it's your boots, it's this. Yeah. And, and honestly, you didn't see a, a really compelling vision there last night, once again, of anyone saying, here is why I am the alternative to Donald Trump. Correct. Here is why I will be a better president, a better leader, a better inspiration for the country than, than Donald Trump. They can't say his name. I mean, DeSantis came out and was like, he's a loser. Right, he tried, and Haley tried by trying yeah. to say, oh, but well, they, he brought us into sucking, debt. They, they, you can see them like trying to get some momentum on their statements, and then they... Then they kind of like go, oh God, he's gonna talk, he's gonna talk about me, and they stop. Right. And every time they do that, every time they pull back from actually saying, "I'm better," he's bad. Let me be your president. I want to lead this country, and I will put Donald Trump in the historical dustbin. They know what happens because look, right down the road in Hialeah, Trump mm -hmm. is giving this rally last night. Which included things like talking about making Tucker Carlson his VP, which all I can say is, <laughs> please, God, do it, Donald. Oh, please my God. Oh Jesus. Make Tucker your VP candidate because I will have more fun than, than the law allows if that's the case. Well, we already know that that's, that's just him getting oh, it is. face. It's... That's bullshit. He's never going to do that because he wants a woman on the ticket with him. But it, it's interesting that that's it – it, it tells you very, what very, the very audience, where the audience is. Yeah. And very hot. Right. <laughs> Maybe Alina Haba is in the running for, for uh, uh, vice president at this point. I don't know. But um, before we get to that rally, we haven't really talked about DeSantis because, I mean, he's again, he got this, he got the endorsement from the, the Iowa governor, from Kim Reynolds, which is kind of a, used to be a big deal back in the day. Yeah, um, again, of. not anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody right. cares. And he didn't even bring it up. He didn't even bring it up during the debate, which goes to show you that he was just completely off kilter again. Most of the debate was on foreign policy, but still, I mean, you get that in there somewhere when you're staking your entire campaign on Iowa, where he's still losing by 30 plus points. But of course, no debate with Ron DeSantis is complete without him looking like a total freaking weirdo on stage. I'm doing my Ron DeSantis lizard imitation. Who, el who else saw this? Who else saw this? Come on, people. Come on, guys. Run it. He must have done that after every answer again all night with the weirdo lizard like to stop the full I mean, liquor going on. What is wrong with that man? Oh, he's so uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> so our team last night they put this on social. It's a joke, everyone. It's not a real GoFundMe. We're chapstick for Ron DeSantis. I mean. It's just, it's cringe. He's cringe all the time. He was cringe last night again. And, um, you know. It's really a truly, I mean, the thing about DeSantis that continues to amaze me, and I've written a lot about this, is Ron DeSantis, there was an expectation among the leadership and the donor class and the elite conservative media. Um, there was a period last year, or this year, excuse, excuse me, this year. Feels like a year ago where National Review wrote 62 pieces about Ron DeSantis. Yeah, before he declared. 62. And all of them were like, Ron DeSantis may have feces, but it does not stink. Ron right. DeSantis is covered in pure gold. Ron DeSantis <laughs> makes my wife quiver when she hears his yeah. name. I mean, all of it is was so, like, over the top. The future of conservative leadership. It's Ron DeSantis. I mean, the thing about it... <laughs> The, the come down for this guy has been so brutal. So and he's up there on stage last night realizing that that day he lost nine Florida elected representatives and, and state senators who had endorsed him who went back to Trump. And back to Trump. And, he, you know, the, the thing about this too, folks, and I want you to really, like, listen, listen to this, like, piece of reality about this campaign. The media would love to have a primary that mattered in the Republican Party. Right now, Donald Trump is ahead by a lot in Iowa. He's New Hampshire is his weakest state, and he's only up 37 in New Hampshire. Right. Um, so by the time you get New Hampshire and 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 Iowa out of the way, 
you go to South Carolina, where Nikki Haley and Tim Scott are in third and fourth places. So their big storyline was, I can win South Carolina. Right. Nope. And then comes Super Tuesday. Now, in almost every Super Tuesday state, it's winner take all for the for 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 that for that. None of these other campaigns have been out there in these states. They can't. They don't have the money to do it. They've nope. all focused on Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. On Super Tuesday, there are two states in particular, California and Texas. Now, you don't think California is an important state, but it's the largest pool of Republican delegates in the country. Did they change that to winner take all also? Because it used to be yep, before. Those are both winner take all. Yeah. So Donald Trump on Super Tuesday, <laughs> March 5th, will get Over. just from those two states almost a fifth of the delegates he needs to win. Mm -hmm. Now, by then... You go to March 12th, which is Florida, where Ron DeSantis is behind Donald Trump by Double 30, 36 yeah. points right now. <laughs> it's 36 only eight. Points. Now, tell me where the move is, where that's going to change. Right. And then he loses the third largest state to Donald Trump, where it's winner take all. Yeah. And you end up at that point where Trump has almost a, 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 a quarter to a third of the delegates he needs after Super Tuesday and Florida. This is over already. It's, yeah, it's over. It's done. over. That's why we keep telling people it's Trump versus Biden. Focus on this. Yes, all this third party noise and garbage that's out there is a problem, but it's Trump and Biden. That's right. A hundred percent. And, you know, and I think everyone on that stage knows that also. They know it. They're, it they are all dead men walking um, oh, yeah. in, in this endeavor here. And I'm just tired of the media trying to turn this into the into a horse race, covering this like this is something normal because it's not normal. And I don't know what was more uncomfortable last night, whether it was Ron DeSantis in the lizard lips or like us all seeing Tim Scott and his beard. Um, let's go on um, onto the rally. And oh, let's yes, let's. Uh, it, like I said earlier, if you didn't watch it, we watched some of it. We were I was flipping back and forth because it just two hours of the GOP debate with those people was too much. But then I had to go to Trump and I'm like, I can't take this, this is too much. So our lovely rapid response team watched it for us and put it together in 94 seconds. Here's the Trump rally. 94 seconds. Go. The election was rigged. The election was stolen. We have an election that's coming up very quickly, but one year is a long time. For four years, nothing happened. I've been indicted. They indicted me. He indicted me. I'm indicted. I'm being indicted. Political indictment. Biden indictment. I got one here. I got one there. I have one there. I have one here. I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot, everybody. These people are sick. I must have cheated by a lot. 2024 is our final battle. We're people with common sense. Sense. We're going to build a dome right around this country. And these stupid idiots come in and they say, oh, we don't want to do that. They don't like sending out their ballots into the open atmosphere. They make paper now, watermark paper that's uh, amazing. Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein. Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. Roseanne Barr. Little old pump. Bacon. Bacon. Your favorite president, me. Pneumonia time, right? Hannibal Lecter. He was a nice fellow. He loves MAGA, and he's all man. <laughs> you sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the plane won't leave. This country's going to hell. I mean... He's also changed his makeup up to be like, Formby's rich walnut furniture polish. Right. I, I was looking at it that. It looks rolling. like a piece of furniture. What is that? And I, I was just looking at my my Mac here that I use for, right. for my contour, which is like NC50. What is he wearing on his face? It's uh, it's awful. Uh, it's it's uh, anyway. Um, listen, this is the same thing, right? It, over there in, in the land of Trumpistan, where he lives, he seems to think that this is like 
the people outside of, of his primary voters, right, that, that haven't, I guess, everybody's heard the same thing over and over and over. It's the greatest hits constantly, constantly. Yes, always. He did introduce two new things that I noticed, Rick. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it. I watched and it, we, yeah. Okay. Well, we didn't cut these clips, but I'm just going to bring them up. What are the two biggest things that they go after Biden on? They're go they go after Biden on age, right? But then we turn around and go, yeah, but Trump is not not that much younger than Biden. He's old too. Um, he went after that. He actually old said, and "Crazy, yes, right." Old and accomplished. I'll take the old accomplished guy exactly every time. But he, but this is what Trump does. He try. It's all projection, obviously, and he always accuses the other side of what he's actually doing. And he said, "Oh no, no, don't go after Biden's age." No, 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 no. He's incompetent. Yeah, because they don't want people to focus on his age. So I thought that was an interesting thing. Let's see if he keeps using that at rallies. He also brought up democracy because we all know that democracy is on the ballot. We say it. We uh, Biden has said it. The Democrats are using that. Right. Democracy is on the ballot because it is. And who tried to break our democracy? Donald freaking Trump. And now he's turning around. And I noticed he said this last night. He goes, we're protecting democracy, not them. We are. Right. So right. now he's trying to pervert the democracy message because it's a salient one for people who are right. sane. And um, oh, actually, Kate said we, we have, have a clip. clip. All right, run it. Let's so, so people Ready. can hear it for themselves. Remember, we are not the ones endangering American democracy. We are the ones saving American democracy. We are saving it. Outrageous. I ye- yelled at my computer. I was like, the hell you are, you son of a bitch. I flipped out. I was like, no, he is not going to co-op that message. We are not going to let I, Donald I, Trump I, co-op that message. I got to tell you, I I have a... Look, they always project their evil onto other people. And now they're trying to project that... They're trying, they're trying to do this because they know that we're on something with them this year where the issues of democracy and individual liberty are hurting them desperately. And so they're going to try to recapture a lot of that. Yes. Or at least muddy the waters. At least muddy the waters because people can't define it or make people question what democracy really is or try to mask the authoritarianism and this illiberal populism that they're engaged in and try to tell people that that's democracy. No. It is Sorry, not. not. That is that is the that is the not that is not democracy. It is not. Industry. It's like the polar opposite of democracy, which is why we're in this fight in the first place to educate people to make sure Correct. they understand the contrast here. And meanwhile, while all that is going on, you had Trump and his court cases, which he's trying to undermine the validity of all of those because he knows he's in big shit trouble there. Um, in in you know Earth One where we live, ninety one counts would normally be disqualifying. 91 felony counts indicted. Crazy. Normally, that would be disqualifying. No, no, not in the Trump land of Trump is on counter earth. And of course, this week we had to make sure that we um got in Trump's head with our audience of one stuff. Um, and if only caught. we were good at that. Right. If only we someone could do that. Well, before we run the ad that got him to do this at the rally last night, we're gonna show you. He knew he has seen the ad. Uh, we have we we placed it on Fox News. It is playing down in Mar-a-Lago many, many, many times over the next couple of days. It's been running since I think Tuesday or Wednesday. And this is what he said at the rally last night. He didn't say our name, but trust us, folks. He's talking oh, about the. He, he was. Party. He wanted to. Is this close? Watch. Works are all fake news now. They're all fake. They're all fake news. They put commercials on that are so bad, even when they're with you. And then they put commercials on that are so bad and ridiculous. But I saw a chart. So where's bad our, and ridiculous. Where's our where's our rapid response on that for all of you Breaking Bad fans? <laughs> you have the rhinos. You have the bad Republicans. You have the sicko rhinos. They put commercials on that are so bad, even when they're with you. And then they put commercials on that are so bad and ridiculous. Perverts who use the names of Washington and Lincoln to buy millions of dollars in ads to say bad, libelous, and incorrect things about it. You know, the rhinos, the people that do the ads or something. Say my name. The Lincoln Project. You're goddamn right. I 
guess they don't like me. It's not fair. <laughs> Having a little fun with it. Every time he does this, we add on to it. Yep. <laughs> um, so what made him... By the way, folks, by the yeah. way, folks, and, and one of the things that you guys end up... Where, where you're, when you donate or when you follow us, when you share the, these ads and share the message, you are helping us get in his head. Now, why is that important? And I think it's... It, we. It, Look, is it fun to troll Trump? Absolutely. It's hilarious. But what it it really does, and I can tell you this, I know this for a fact, because we've had two separate sources tell us in the last 24 hours that Donald Trump spent an hour raging about this ad about Ivanka that you're going to see in a minute. (laughs) He's furious with it. Why do we do that? Is it to make him angry? Well, sure. But it's also because that's an hour out of his day. He's not campaigning raising money, attacking Joe Biden, or anything else. And we know their campaign folks are angry right now. Hi, Chris. I know you have your your trackers watching us. (laughs) Love you, brother. Um, These people, when we are able to get that kind of ad run in Mar-a-Lago or in Bedminster, we know how to get it to them. We know how to put it on there, the ways people see it. I'll tell you a trick, guys, and he can't stop it. He can't stop it. When we run this ad in... Mar-a-Lago. We know in the club at Mar-a-Lago, in the lounge part, they have the golf channel on. So we're always putting on the golf channel. If we know he's going to be at Doral playing golf that day, it's on the golf channel. It's Mm -hmm. on Fox at night because he likes to watch, you know, watch Fox at night so he can fall asleep in his in his gold in his golden bed. (laughs) All these things that we do to mess with him, they have a strategic objective as well. We are always keeping him thinking about something else. We're always distracting him. We're always causing him pain. And sometimes the pain comes in an area where it confuses pain and arousal and desire and hatred and love and grossness. Yeah, that's gross. Which we'll show you. Yes. Between that and now you talking about him laying in his bed to go to sleep at night watching Fox. I don't want to have any of those images in my mind ever again. Um, Donald Trump covered in oil. (laughs) Uh, Here's the ad that has driven him crazy this week because his beloved daughter Ivanka testified in court yesterday. Oh, Donnie, she's taking the stand. The one you always wanted and could never have. She and Jared tried to get away from you, to ignore you, using your name to make billions. You're embarrassing to her, uncomfortable, gross. My dad's communication style is not to everyone's taste. She's looking for an exit freedom from you. So when she testifies, she'll sell you out. Maybe she already has. What'd she tell Letitia James behind your back? What deal did she cut? The statements are explicit that the preparation was the responsibility of Mr. Trump. She'll do anything to be away from you. Forever. All those years hoping she'd be the one. Now, she's just a witness against you. And if you think she'll ever visit you in prison, think again. (laughs) Oh, he has such a soft spot for it for Miss Ivanka. I don't even uh, think it's really always soft, Tara. Oh, gross. Oh, my God. I said I set that up for you, Rick. I actually you really did. I I did. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, uh. She has been real quiet the last couple of years since they left the White House because she's um, basically a pariah in her social circles. And those of you who are dedicated watchers of us know that we've often said that Jared and Ivanka will never, ever get an invite to the Met Gala again. Nope. And we actually named that internally Met Gala. Because... Yeah, that's, that's, that's the shipping code for the ad, Met Gala. Yes, Met Gala. Um, because she's trying. She's emerged once again a little bit in the social scene, hanging out with Kim Kardashian. She got an invite to Kim Kardashian's birthday party. woo big deal. Um, she's trying to, you know, ease her way back in. And then she has to go through this again. And people are reminded of why we scorned her and kicked her out of the, in the first place. So, yeah, it's not a great week for Trump. 
He was on the stand on Monday, acting like a crazy person as usual, was admonished by the judge. He was ranting and raving. You saw in our last week in the Republican Party, his, his lawyer was bitching and whining about how she was mistreated. And about, bitch, shut up. OK, shut up. You work for Donald Trump. No, no one has any sympathy for you. Have several seats. Shut up. Right. So like, yeah, have all of them, please. So it's um, and his son's. They, they didn't do too great either up on the stand. I mean, this trial in New York is couldn't go any worse for Donald Trump, really. No. It really couldn't. And he's so personally invested in it because this is all about his business. I mean, the conclusion here, he, he's already been found of financial fraud, guilty of financial fraud. This whole thing, whole thing is about the penalty phase. How much is it going to cost him? And it could be the death penalty for his business if this judge decides he could decide that the 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 whole kit and caboodle here. What two hundred fifty million? I think is the is what the yep. state's asking, and that would basically end the Trump organization in New York. So they're not doing a great job convincing this judge that they shouldn't get the financial death penalty here, and you know it's driving him crazy. And we're happy to contribute to that. Happy to any old time, any old time I can cause Donald Trump some more <laughs> mental or physical mi misery. I am here to yes. deliver. We're for here you. for it. We're here for it. Which leads us into the polling from this week. And, you know, you had the, between the polling this week on Biden, everybody freaking out on Sunday. And then you had Tuesday, the election results across the country, which were fantastic for Democrats, fantastic Huge. for democracy, Huge. fantastic for people who want to beat back MAGA extremism. Big deal. Big deal. And this is what it's all about, folks. This is what's at stake. And on Tuesday, it kind of, thank God, shut a lot of people up about the, the, the Biden polls. But Tuesday, we cannot underestimate, I mean, understate, understate the importance of the Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade and the impact it's having on the elections moving forward. We just saw it. We saw it last year in the midterms. We saw it again on Tuesday all across the country, from Kentucky to Ohio to where I live in Virginia. MAGA extremism on the abortion issue has been repudiated in those states. Huge, huge wins. Huge. And the Republicans know that this is an albatross for them. You heard them last night at the debate. We're a party of losers and we keep losing. And yeah, well, between Donald Trump and your extremist culture war bullshit, and wanting to take women's rights away, yeah, um, it's a losing issue, you idiots. So big, big deal. I know that for you, I mean, for me, I'm glad to see this whole Glenn Youngkin nonsense is over with. Okay, yeah, Glenn Youngkin, that was, that's, that's now done. That's a wrap because Virginia now is their both chambers are run by the Democrats. They actually flipped the House. They overperformed in in Virginia, which was a huge bellwether in my opinion. So that is reason to be happy. New Jersey. They got gains in New Jersey. I was a little worried because Democrats have had a little rough time in New Jersey it's the last been a, couple of years. It's been a little messy in New Jersey. A little Jersey, messy in New Jersey. Cool. But Democrats ended up get, getting gains in New Jersey. So, you know, it, it all across Kentucky with Bashir winning, um, Ohio with the with the ballot initiative there that makes it a constitutional right to uh, abortion in, in Ohio, which is a red state now. I mean, these are all things to be to be happy about people and to have confidence that they're that that these polls you hear about joe biden losing to trump right now they are not dispositive of what will happen in a year from now rick will you please explain that a year is like a gazillion years in political terms okay folks let me let me run some please. numbers for you at this point when the president who with for whom i worked in george herbert walker bush <laughs> at this point in 1991, he was at 87% approval, mm -hmm. leading any hypothetical candidate by more than 50 points. I think Bill he was Clinton. up to 92 at one point, wasn't he? He was, 92%. but it was 87 by yeah. November. Yeah. He, he was defeated by Bill Clinton. In 1984, Ronald Reagan had a 37% approval rating, and only 32% of Americans wanted him to run for a second term. He and they thought won, he was too old. And they thought he was too old. He won handily. At this point, Barack Obama only had four points more approval than Joe Biden does right now. Mm -hmm. And he in 2011. And he won. Polls a year out mean 
jack shit nothing. That's, that's right. They are they are numbers screaming into the void. Most of them are produced right now either to induce panic in the Democrats, to drive a phony narrative of there's a horse race on. There's not. This 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 idea that people panic every time a bad poll comes out. And yet, I will tell you also when bad polls have come out for Democrats. 2018, 2020, mm -hmm. 2022. And in each of those three election cycles, the same navel-gazing, panic attack, I can't believe we're all doing... And yet Democrats picked up seats in all those, around the country in all those years. Including now, winning the presidency in 2020. Now, yeah. Now, and I would say this best, the, the best one for last, at this point in 2019, Donald Trump was 20 to 24 points ahead of any Democratic rival. Yeah, that's right. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, Kamala. And in some, he was way ahead. Yep. So folks, take a deep breath. These polls are meant to shake you and panic you. And I'm going to tell you the next set of polls you're going to see that are going to be the panic polls. You're going to see out there in some of these states, Dean Phillips will go from 2% <laughs> to 9% or from 4% to 7%. And it's going to be spun by our former not regretted departed colleague, Steve <laughs> Schmidt, and to like, there's a grand swell of joy for Dean Phillips. You must join this army of liberty. I'm imitating. That's my Steve imitation. But, and I'm sorry, I could do it if I was like, if I had like 40 more minutes to bloat. Um, and a couple shots of tequila, but yeah. <laughs> Juan happy, Benitez happy Day. Benito Juarez Day. Benito Juarez, Saturday. that's it. Benito Juarez um, Day. But long story short, folks, <laughs> you're going to see polls all year. I'm going to give you the quick, super quick lesson. If you see a poll that says all, the, all, all Americans, ignore it. If you see a poll that says registered voters, ignore it. If you see a poll that says likely voters, then you can look at it, yep. but you have to take it with a huge grain of salt. Because Re polls reading are and knowing a snapshot in time. Is a really, right? It's an art and a science, and and it is not. And, and, and look, a very flawed one. A very yeah, flawed one, as we've yeah. seen come to realize the last couple of years. And we've right. always learned that polls are just a snapshot in time. You need to pay attention to trends, trends. Now, are there pieces of these polls that you can get takeaways from and sure. go, okay, yes, these are some things that we know we have a problem in or that they need to improve. We get it. Everybody's worried that Joe Biden's too old. We don't need a poll to tell us that, right? Like we get it. But the point that you made earlier, Rick, it, when we talked about um, uh, Trump being old too, would you rather have someone who's older, competent, loves our democracy, is good right. and decent, and understands what's at stake, or someone who is an absolute psychopath who wants to destroy our country, has already demonstrated what he wants to do, and is telling us what he would like to do again, and tear up the Constitution and totally destroy our constitutional republic. This yep. is this is the choice, people. And this week we put out another ad. We've been very busy here at the Lincoln Project. We've Woo! got the we've got the Ivanka ad running 58 times over two days down in Florida, driving Trump crazy. And then we have this ad that we put out, which I do believe is voiced by is this one voiced by Peter Coyote or is the other one? But one of our ads, we've got Peter Coyote. No, it's the other one. No, we'll, this we'll is show not later. the one for Peter. The one at the end of the show is voiced by Peter. But this one here shows us. What's going on here? Okay, it's a reminder of what's at stake. We've got a war going on in the Middle East. We've got the we've got Ukraine. We've got these crazies in the house. We have a freaking MAGA speaker. There's a lot at stake here. And it's important for people to be constantly reminded because if the Democrats aren't going to do it, <laughs> hello, we will. And hopefully they'll take some notes. Run, something is happening. Something is happening in American politics. For decades, Republicans called themselves the party of strength in foreign policy. Today, the Republican Party attacks our military. Some of the dumbest people I've ever met in my life. And cozies up to our enemies. Hezbollah is very smart. They're all very smart. Republican senators are blocking key military appointments, making America less safe. This sweeping hold is undermining America's military readiness. Republicans are helping Vladimir Putin by calling for the end of military aid to the brave Ukrainians. Under Republican, not another penny will go to Ukraine. 
Today, President Joe Biden is the voice of a strong America. Let there be no doubt, the United States has Israel's back. This is an American president. We cannot and will not let terrorists like Hamas, tyrants like Putin win. President Joe Biden, America's president. That's how it's done. Okay. Yep. That's, that's, what, that's what Democrats should be putting out now. Right now. Every week. Yeah. Setting look, the narrative. He has the chance to recapture the mantle of national security from the Republicans. That ad uh, is, uh, Stuart Stevens wrote that. It was brilliant. Um, I want to say one quick thing. We'll go into some happy news and wrap up. We've yeah. had a lot of questions in the chat tonight about Steve Schmidt. Mm. Folks, I want to be very clear about Steve helping Dean Phillips. Um, run for president against President Biden. It will only help Donald Trump. A and honestly, I will say this. I'm embarrassed by Steve and I'm embarrassed for Steve. I He has been gone from the Lincoln Project for over two years. Correct. Um, he did not leave on good terms. He did we not. did not. We, we have not regretted his loss and his, his departure a single day. Our team is better than ever. The production is sharper. The creative is sharper. The communications are better. Social is better. Everything is running better at this organization. And I just feel, I kind of feel pity for Dean Phillips because he got sold um, a bill of goods that he could win this thing. And the only person that's going to benefit from it is Steve. And Steve has said a lot of stuff about the Lincoln Project. It's not true. The vast majority of things he said about the Lincoln Project in the last two years have been outright lies. And he should really hope, and I've kept my mouth shut about this for a long time, he should really consider whether he wants to continue that strategy because when people like to do that sort of thing, when other people want to tell the truth, it hurts a lot more. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it right there. But we are nothing to do with Steve. We have had nothing to do with Steve for over two years. Um, the organization has has never worked better than it has in the last in those last two years. We're doing great. This This is a fight that matters. And, you know, you look at this guy who for years was like leading the charge saying we can't do anything to make it more likely Trump would be elected. Everything yeah. he's doing for Dean Phillips makes it more likely Trump will be elected. That's right. And the lawyers That's will probably not love me saying all this. Well, but I'm saying it because it's truthful and, and it's correct. And our right. audience, the audience that stuck with the Lincoln Project this entire time, the people that have backed yeah. our fight deserve the truth. Deserve and the I, explanation. Yep. Every single one of you. That's right. That's right. And I think it's uh, you just. Let the work speak for itself and see who's on the right side of this issue. That's what I'll say about that. Yeah. Um, so, and also, why uh, I'd like to just reassure folks. Oh, let me say one more thing. Yeah. Today, the news broke that Steve had already been moved from the campaign to the Super PAC. <laughs> and right. that he was going to run TV ads for, this, for Dean Phillips. Folks, the creative team at the Lincoln Project, the best in the business, the award-winning creative mm -hmm. team, with our amazing creative director Michelle Kinney and our producers Ben Howe and Joey Wartnerke and our and our and our incredible cast of of voiceover talent and and music talent and everything else, they're here at the Lincoln Project. Whatever dollar store hobos he gets who have an Avid or a, or a Final Cut on their on their janked out stolen laptop to cut ads. It's not going to be what you see here, folks. And I'm proud as hell of our team and in the creative department. And I will fight for all of them every day, both in both in the, the main creative department and the rapid response department. They produce the best video content in the country. Yes. Bar none, hands down. I will fight anybody over that at any time. Yes. So Kate, um, don't be Kevin. fooled that you're going to see that sort of yeah. thing that's going to all suddenly like sweep up and go, oh, Dean Phillips, it's just as good as the Lincoln Project ads. No, no, no. Good no. luck. No, no. And and we all know that. And and um, we're we're proud as hell of all of them. And uh, bring, bring it on. They really think that they're going to compete with us. We're the best in the business for a reason. And um, yeah. on that note, uh, everybody, you know, uh, keep calm and carry on. Keep calm and carry on. All this. And we stay we in the will. fight. You guys That's stay right. in the fight with us, and we will run this thing to the very last day. Absolutely. We will, get, we will we will get Joe Biden back in office and put Donald Trump on the dustbin of history. Absolutely. And on that note, two things. One, when we were talking about Rick traveling to Savannah, it was because 
your son, Andrew, who is part of our team as well and his lovely yep. bride. They got married this weekend in Savannah. Woo-hoo! There they are looking sharp and beautiful. Is that a, is that a green? It's a green velvet, velvet? jacket. Yes. Very schmancy. I love it. <laughs> um, big congratulations to Andrew. There's a lot of these on my Instagram folks. Cause you know. Yes. Well, of course you guys looked fabulous. You and Renee looked fabulous. It was, I, I love you. a good we, wedding. So we had, um, we had, we had some good outfits. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Good and good Nora, outfits. I got a chance to hang out with Nora and her husband yeah. uh, when we were in Nashville. They are awesome. Also, I had excellent pizza in Nashville, by the way, which shocked the hell out of me because right? I'm a pizza snob coming from Jersey. My husband's from Brooklyn. Like the best pizza in the world is in New York, and New Jersey. However, I had some decent pizza down there at Frankie's in Nashville because guess what? They're from Brooklyn. So there you have it. (laughs) And finally, uh, as we wrap up, we want to thank everybody. And we have another ad that we put out. It's called Stop Pretending. And this is, I think, something just to keep everybody reminded about this fight that we're in. And uh, we want to thank you all for supporting us. And we will see you guys either next week or the week. I I think we might have a show. Who knows? I know. I know. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. We'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe on the YouTube machine. Yes. And we'll see you next week. It's time to stop pretending. Time to face reality. Donald Trump will be the Republican candidate for president. There's a battle ahead like nothing we've ever seen. The fate of your country, your family, and your freedom are on the line. You can't win this on the debate stage or with policy papers. He is more cruel, more desperate, and more dangerous than ever. He'll use violence and chaos. He'll fight dirty. That's why you need fighters on your side who hit just as hard. People who walked away from the Republican Party and know how to fight it. We're the Lincoln Project. We're not liberals. We're not progressives. We're former Republicans who put country over party. We're Americans who know unless we stop Trump, he will end this democracy we cherish. We're all in to defeat Trump, break the MAGA movement, and end this chaos. It's America or it's Trump.